Hello there and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we are going to be talking about a little bit of a controversial subject and specifically that is the DJI Geo system. Now before I get started if you like what you see in this video please do subscribe to the channel. There's a button in the bottom right hand corner and by clicking this it means you'll get any updates on any videos that we release in the future. If you'd like to support the channel there are also some links in the description as well to the products in this and other videos too. Now Really, just to give you guys some background, DJI released Geo approximately two years ago now, and it is their updated no-fly zone system that was introduced alongside the Mavic and things like that. And the whole idea of Geo was that it was more flexible than the original NFZ system, whereas on the old NFZ system, you simply add red zones, which you could literally not flying them at all and there was no options to do anything else whereas when they introduced geo it introduced a number of other zones that were available to you as well and these were restricted zones which were red which you couldn't unlock but they introduced authorization zones and warning zones and you had a yellow authorization zone which you could unlock online or via the device itself as long as you add either a mobile number or a credit card number and then you had the enhanced warning zone and the warning zone which you could deal with directly on the vice device itself without any problems now this has worked fairly well to be fair there are a lot of politics around these things and people can argue whether you should or shouldn't do it in the first place however for the most part geo has done what it was meant to do and it has kept things nice and safe within the industry to a point however there were a few quirks with it and one of them was that the shape of the restriction zones were always just round they did not reflect the actual shape of the restricted airspace that they were covering so if you were covering an airport for instance it had to cover a massive area around that airport and the problem with that is is it could restrict people when there was really no need to so as a result of this dji have updated geo to version 2.0 and this new version of geo adds more better ways of dealing with the zones and specifically making the zones reflect the proper shape of the airport now if we look at this image here this is how the new system would work on a typical airport you would have the runway in the center which would remain the red restricted zone but instead of having this giant circle of red it only covers the runway itself around that you then have this blue authorization zone and that blue zone basically is the same as the old yellow zone which is unlockable via the device or via the website in advance so it now means that you would actually be able to fly much closer to the runway if you had permission and you were flying on an airport for commercial purposes you wouldn't have to speak to dji to get it unlocked externally um, around that then they have an enhanced warning zone which then is the one which simply pops up and says are you sure you have permission to fly here you click accept and then you're able to fly another new feature of geo 2.0 is the ability now for them to put restrictions in along the flight path and that is the takeoff and landing path and as you can see on either side we now have new altitude zones and what these are is altitude restriction zones so in the path that the aircraft would normally take off and land you are limited to a certain height at the furthest one out you're limited to a total of 120 meters and then at the next one in you're limited to a height of 60 meters now this is around a high-risk airport and around normal smaller airports you would actually have less restrictions again with the runway itself being simply an authorization zone and everything else around it being an enhanced warning zone so the differences with this new geo are quite substantial and it means that you're going to be able to use it much easier than you have been able to in the past and you're not going to get issues with these massive warning zones covering large swathes of land when really it only needed to cover the basic low risk runway and as you can see on the lowest 
highest risk ones, they're simply going to put an enhanced warning zone on the runway. So it is an improvement to the system. Now, if you look at the new GeoMath, this is already in place and ready to go. So if you're using a Mavic 2, an Inspire 2, or any of the more recent DJI drones, this new Geo system is active on the latest firmware, and it means that you're able to take advantage of it straight away. Now, as I've said at the start, Geo is a complex subject, and it will always bring out the best and the worst in both sides of the industry, regardless as if you agree that if you should have restrictions or not, it's hard to deny that having some forms of no-fly zones is important. And with the changes DJI have made to Geo 2.0, it is far more re realistic compared to what we had on the original system. Now, just to give you guys some background information on this, the reason for the change is DJI have been able to change providers. They used to use AMAP, who used to do all of their background providing. However, they've now changed to a company called Precision Hawk, and that is the company that is now providing them with their updated data, and it allows them to do this much more accurate warning zones around airports. Now, with all of these things, it's never perfect, and they're never is a way to make sure everything is perfect people will find quirks people will find mistakes and if you do find them you can email flysafe at dji.com and they will hopefully get that updated for you as soon as possible um overall i have always been a fan of the geo system for the main reason of i do believe we have to have some form of restriction however as a commercial operator myself i don't want to be restricted in where i can fly so there is always this catch 22 for me however with this new new system it is clear it is much more accurate and much more realistic and it means that you're not going to have to jump through some of the hoops you had to jump through before for low risk airports and low or medium risk airports you won't even need to get dji fly safe involved whatsoever it will only be on the absolutely highest risk airports if you wanted to fly on the runway as a commercial operator then you would need to get them involved um the new altitude zones either the side as well are a welcome addition and this does mean that when you are flying in those areas either side of the runway it will put some restrictions in place but that is a realistic thing to expect to be honest and you know they've got a restriction height of 120 meters in my opinion there shouldn't be any issues with that in the uk that's the legal height anyway so you wouldn't be able to go over that um that is pretty much it for this video. It was just to give you guys a brief outline of the changes to the Geo system. As I've said, this is live today. You can use it today. Um, let me know your thoughts on it. Give me some feedback. Uh, so far, it all looks good and I've seen no major issues. Yes, there's been the odd report of the odd airport being uh, listed. That's no longer there. However, other than that, overall, it seems much better than what we had before. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. As I've said, please do subscribe. The button's in the bottom right-hand corner. And I will do another video again soon.